Okay, so today we are going to be looking at tuples and what makes tuples so interesting. So one of the things right off the bat with tuples that you should always remember is that tuples are immutable. And so what does immutable mean? If we looked at lists, for example, we are able to change them. We can add to lists, we can remove things from lists, we can index lists, we can slice lists. The thing is tuples though, is that they are immutable, which basically means that once that data is there, it's protected, so you can't change it. So let's add that little note there. So once, so once data is there, you can't change it. And we'll get into that later on, and I'll show you, um, you know, how how lists are kind of similar to tuples, but also then how they're very very different. What else should we look at loophole, uh, loopholes at <laughs> at tuples? We're looking at tuples. Um, so, so here's a good way to look into. So once, um, once data is inside a tuple, it cannot be reassigned. So again, similar to what we were saying before, once you have data there, it's there. You can't change it, can't reassign it. It is there. And then the general structure of tuples. Let's take a look at that. They use parentheses. So one, two, three, for example. So these two parentheses you see here, that would be uh, a tuple. And that's how we'd recognize it compared to a list, which utilizes our square brackets, or a dictionary, which utilizes the curly brackets. So let's get in and show, show an actual tuple. So let's start with this. Let's call it uh, my t. So for my tuple, and we're going to create it. It's going to be, let's go one, two, and three. Uh, and let's also let's create a list as well, actually. So we'll create a my list. And remember with list, we use these square brackets, one, two, three. And to, to be sure the type of data or what the type of uh, data that's basically been created, we can always use the type function. So if I go type my t, I can see it's a tuple. And similar, if I were to go type, if I were to type and I'd go my, oops, my first game. Nope, not what I want. Uh, my list, I can see that it is a list. Let's clear this out. So um, a good thing with a good thing to know about tuples is that you can actually use mixed object types similar to a list. So let's create a new tuple, we're going to call it T and we'll call it we'll have one. So we are gonna have a string, we're going to have a integer, we'll have a float. And we'll have another string. And again, just to show that we're going to go type and put in T and we see that it is a tuple. So tuples can have mixed type, you know, strings, integers, floats, all that great things can all be located within a tuple. You can also check check the length of a tuple. So using the length function function L E N brackets T. Uh, you can also slice and index a tuple, which is really cool. So with a tuple, let's say we have a T and the similar slicing format that you would utilize for a list, you have your start, your end and your steps. So steps being uh, every one, every other, every third. So let's actually show you a couple of these. So let's say I wanted to, um, you know, grab every other item within this tuple. So if you remember our tuple top here, we have one, one, 4.3 in the rocks. So I'll go two colons and I'll press two and I'll get every other one. So the first one, the second one, or sorry, the first one, skip the second one, the third one, skip the fourth one. And then since there's no more, we wouldn't grab it. But as you can see, it's every other. We can also do similar to what we did before with lists. We can just do um, everything uh, except for, let's do it. Let's do one and over. So we're gonna skip everything that's in index zero. So the first place, and we're gonna grab everything from over there. We can also do the similar as before with a, ne oops, a negative one. So everything except for the very last uh, item that's within the tuple. So a lot of really cool things. We can also, um, we can also do similar before. Let's add this in here. So let's do one and we'll go three and we grab what's in the second position and then what is in the third position. So a lot of cool things you can do with tuples. Let's clear this out. Uh, so let's create actually another tuple here and I can show you some other cool things with them. So we'll create another tuple, we'll call it T again, and we'll do A, we'll do A, we'll do 
A again. Let's do B, and let's do, uh, oops, B, comma, and then let's do C. All right, so we have a new tuple. It has A three times, it has B once, and it has C once. So we can actually count the number of times certain data shows up within the tuple. So if I were to go T, and then I'd use the method count, I put an A, I can see that A is located, A occurs three times within this tuple. Alternatively, if I went T and I did a count and I put in C, I can see that C occurs once within this tuple. You can also index it. So you can see where the very first time a certain piece of data showed up within the tuple. So if I were to go T dot index, oops, it helps I spell it right, index, I put A, I can see that in index zero is A when A showed up for the first time. And if I were to do T dot index, index, for B, I can see in the third position is where it B shows up for the first time. So if we look back up here, we have A and zero, A and one, A and two, then B and three, which is awesome. And the last little piece I wanna show you about tuples is what we were talking about in the very beginning about them being immutable. So you can't make any changes. So if you remember before I created this list, right? So I have my list and I have my tuple, so T here. So let's clear this out so we can keep it all together. And let's say I wanted to add something new to my list. So I have my list and actually no, let's do this. Right. Let, let's say I want to reassign the very first value in my list. So I would put zero. So for index zero, and I would say it now equals uh, the rock skips leg day. And now when I look at my list, I now have the rock skips leg day, the number two and number three. And this is where I mean that tuples are immutable. So if I were to do the exact same thing with my tuple and I would go zero and I would say uh, the rock, um, yes, yeah, consistent light, the rock skips leg day, right? And I get an error, tuple, object does not support item assignment. So this is what I mean by it's immutable. You can't change it once the data is in there. And so the question is, why would you ever want to use a tuple? And I mean, there's kind of one real main reason for this. And the, the, the point of using a tuple is that it ensures that when you're passing information, sorry, let's say it again, when you're passing information around or you're reusing it or you're, you know, pulling it up in one place and assigning and doing all this great stuff with it, that nothing has changed. It helps, it helps basically ensure that the data is protected and helps ensure data integrity. Anyway, that's all we have about tuples today. If you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you next time.